Yeah, speaking of learning, I wanted to switch gears for the last couple of questions, and I wanted to ask you about parenting. Um, you know, you were nice enough to invite me to your office for lunch last year, and you know, one of the things that struck me about the conversation is I don't think we talked about investing or factor investing at all. Right. I think, you know, I think pretty much we covered all the other topics the whole time, and this was one of the most interesting topics for me. And you know, it, it strikes me that you know you have three children, and I, one is a CEO of an asset management firm, one I believe is a stand-up comedian, and one I believe is a children's book author. And Correct. so clearly you haven't guided your kids in any way. And, you know, Patrick talked, when you had him on your podcast, you talked about how you had the bookshelf and, you know, you always would just point him there whenever he needed anything. And so yeah. I'm wondering, you know, I have a one-year-old and a five-year-old, and so I can obviously use all the help I can get right now. <laughs> so I wanted to just ask you if you had any tips based on your experience in parenting that you might give me. Sure, of course. Actually, I do. Um, I was just talking about this with another young dad um, uh, just a few days ago. Um, so my wife and I were very lucky in all sorts of respects, but we got married very young. We were 22. And so we decided, well, okay, we're crazy. We got married when we were 22. Let's have kids young. So Patrick was born when we were 24. And um, my wife and I talked at great length about, okay, so we're going to be parents what what kind of parenting style should we use? What what should we embrace? And through our conversation, it became very clear to both of us that what was most important for us was as best as we could affect our kids, because that's something else that is another conversation. They're, they're affected by lots of folks other than you. Uh, but our goal was that at the end of the day, they were great adults, okay? So that sounds you know, almost trite, right? But if you think about that, if you make that your baseline, my goal is to raise great adults. That precludes you from all sorts of uh, behaviors that without that goal, you would probably engage in. So you wanna raise great adults? You never say to that child, because I said so, because I'm big and you're little, because you're living in my house. That's not going to raise a great adult. That's going to raise somebody who kind of uh, is uh, very conformist and doesn't ask questions. And I found the greatest gift in life is the ability to always say, why, why, why? And so you, you can't do things that come naturally to us as human beings, right? Um, and, you know, when you get frustrated, so I have two grandkids now, Patrick's kids, who are six and, and four, adore them. They're over here all the time. And, and I, it's, it's great seeing Patrick and Lauren, his wife, kind of embracing that same idea, that their, their goal is to raise great adults. When you do that, it precludes you from doing all sorts of behaviors that I think are bad. Again, I'm not you know, Jack, you're going to raise your kids the way you're going to raise your kids. But if you think about it and, and look at, okay, so who succeeds and who fails? People succeed who are curious, who are not afraid to ask questions, and who continue to search for other questions as things come up, right? So, and, and are not just like, as when I was on Patrick's podcast, I pointed him to the bookshelf, and it's true, I did. This is pre-Google, right? I, I guess I'd point him to Google now. But um, what, it, what it engendered, I think, I think if my three kids were sitting here and you asked them, it, I think, engendered a real deep curiosity and a voracious um, desire to learn and know things. And so... You're absolutely right when you mentioned there are three occupations. I never once suggested to any of my children, including Patrick, that they should be interested in what I did, um, investment management, finance, ever. Because I grew up in a family that had a big family company and it was in the oil business. And boy, my uncle, he really wanted me to be in the oil business. <laughs> and he kind of took it as a personal affront that I was more interested in the stock market. And I loved him and he, me, spent a lot of time with him. 
and, and finally we were out at dinner and he was making yet a pitch yet again for why I needed to come and work for the company, the family company. And I finally looked at him and I said, Uncle John, I love you. And I love the fact that you love oil. I don't love oil. I love the stock market. If I could be really helpful to you in that, I would love to do it. And he got a big smile on his face finally. And he's like, okay, you stuck with it. He goes, I was just going to keep chipping at you and keep punching you until I figured out, no, nope, he's just not going to give in to me, right? So that was one of the lessons I learned was raise your children in, so that they can pursue their own uh, passions, pursue their own desires and knowledge, and, and you'll get a mixed bag, right? So Patrick didn't read what, well, I wonder if he's ever read all of my books. I doubt it. <laughs> I, I le and let's be clear here. I read his book, um, but I'm joking, obviously. Uh, but he became interested later in life. And that was wholly on his own. It was not because I wanted him in, in a finance. It was not because I suggested that that be a good idea for him. That was Patrick, right? And what you see is, uh, with Patrick now is that's Patrick. That isn't Jim, that's Patrick. And he, I'm immensely proud of him, right? And I love working with him. But that's because he invested all of his life growing up in learning and doing all of those things. I'm equally proud of my middle daughter, Kate, who's got uh, a, uh, a great uh, middle grade fiction book out right now. Um, and my daughter, Lael, who is a stand-up comedian. Um, you know, that's a, that's a, Boy, you, you, you want a, a really scary profession? Mm -hmm. Stand-up comedian. I mean, because we who invest people, people's money, you know, we're judged every day, right? How do we do today? Wrong way to measure, but there it is. Um, Stand-up comedian? Like, I've set my daughter, Lael, is actually here. Um, and she's visiting uh, for a while. Uh, but I've said to her, you know, I've made probably by this time, thousands of speeches to huge audiences. And I would be petrified trying to do even five minutes to make people laugh. I mean, that is brave. <laughs> and she's hysterical. So I, I, I love that my kids have all pursued their own passions. And I think that they got there by just us living by that real simple rule, a very simple guideline, which precluded all sorts of behaviors and required others, right? So don't just say, uh, you know, dad, what's the airspeed velocity of an odd and swallow? Always answer African or European. <laughs> so that they're gonna look it up, right? Um, and, and then le listen to your children. Again, sounds really trite, but when, when our kids wanted to do something or not do something, it wasn't enough for them to come in and say, Daddy, mommy, I want X, right? Um, I'll use Patrick as an example. So Patrick played chess as uh, a youth. I always joke that he was an incredible, and he really was an incredible chess player. And then puberty hit, and then you know all bets are off. The girls, not chess. Um, but he also was taking karate when he was a kid. And he came to me one day and said, Dad, yeah. Um, I think I, I think I don't want to take karate anymore. Really? Why? Because I don't want to. And I'm like, that's not a good that's not a good reason. So I'm I'm fully willing to listen to you, and when you can come in and tell me, in a reasonable manner, the points why you don't want to do this anymore, I'm willing to listen. And he got upset. He was six or seven, <laughs> so of course, but he came back after thinking about it. And he had a really great argument. I don't remember the specifics of it now, but he had a cogent, reasoned argument for why he wanted to stop. And I was like, okay, you're done. And so when, when, you, when you encourage that in your kids, Jack and, and Justin, it, it makes them more robust, right? It makes them more anti-fragile, if you will. Um, because at the end of the day, if, if you are forced to, you know, come up with great reasons for why you want to do something, guess what you do? You spend a lot of time thinking about that. And you spend a lot of time kind of going through the pros and cons. And, and, you know, I think that that finds better adults.
So that, and, and, and be very, uh, my last thing, uh, Jack would be, be incredibly patient <laughs> because, you know, and, and remember what you did. <laughs>